Hey guys, it's Johnny here from Flickrpix. Um, I just wanted to make a quick film just to give you a sort of a rundown as to all the kind of techniques um, and materials that we use for shooting stop motion animation. So the film that we're making at the minute is called Da Humbug. It's a short Christmas film for RTE. Uh, it's going to be shown on RTE Junior and the RTE Player in December. So we're kind of currently in the middle of the shoot at the minute and this shot here that, that um, I'm showing you is a scene in the main character's living room where he's playing his piano. As you can see, uh, the set's decked out with Christmas decorations and we try to keep everything roughly at a scale ratio of 6 to 1 to, to match the size of the puppet. The set itself, the walls are made of foam core, which is quite a light, lightweight material. Um, in fact, there's so much in this set, I'm not going through everything individually, but you can see a couple of the highlights, for example, would be this nice piano. Uh, piano was made by our very talented model maker Jamie Mills um, and it's made of foam core. Uh, it's painted with various hues of brown to give it that uh, old antique look and a wash of varnish over the top just for a, a glossy finish. We had to keep some of the keys uh, separate as there's a close-up scene where we, uh, we see Bob playing a song. So we worked out which keys he would need to play first uh, and then we made various increments of those keys. So there's a half push down one and then a fully push down one and then what we did was we carefully replaced them each time as Bob's fingers pushed them down. There's a nice armchair here in the middle of the room. The armchair itself was sculpted in four sections uh, from a polystyrene block and then it was glued together and painted brown. Sorry Bob, I'm going to have to interrupt you here from your piano playing. So Bob's the star of the film. Uh, he's currently on a small rig to keep him in place while we animate him. So I'll just run through some of the materials here that we used to make Bob. So his head is 3D printed. Uh, we sculpted it first in ZBrush uh, and then we printed it off using uh, PLA which is like a lightweight polyester material uh, which we can then sand and paint. We used plasticine for the flexible parts of his face such as his eyebrows and moustache to achieve a range of expressions that we need. And the handy thing um, about his mouth is that it's covered by his moustache so we didn't need to print a range of heads or lower jaws like they do on a lot of higher budget stop motion films that you see. His eyes are just part of the head but to get the movement we literally just cut out little black shapes using a, an adjustable hole puncher um, and they just stay on, on the eye with a bit of Vaseline on the back. The eyelids themselves are 3D printed too and, and we ensured that we had the full range we needed uh, in, the, in the 3D software first and then we printed off each lid individually which we then replace each time. In, inside Bob is a ball and socket armature which, is, uh, which allows us to get all the various poses and movement that he needs for the film and the fingers are simply strands of wire that are connected to the armature. The hands themselves were also sculpted digitally um, and printed in solid, solid polyester but um, we then needed to create a mould of these prints so we could pour in a coloured silicon uh, mix over the armature and the result of which are, are two fully flexible silicon hands uh, and then we can pose these in all the different positions that we need for the film. Bob's body is made up of a soft foam material like the one you'd find inside a cushion um, and after this uh, is cut with scissors and sculpted to match his body our talented uh, costume maker Rachel then cut the patterns out of the fabrics that we chose and stitch them all together to make his jumper and trousers. Uh, the scarf has a wire gauze sandwiched up through it so that um, it stays in position when we animate it for the various poses we need. So yeah, that's Bob. Um, I'm just going to put Bob back now in case I drop him on the floor. Not that anything like that's ever happened in the past. Um, moving around, so I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the software that we use for stop motion animation. Uh, we use this program called Dragon Frame. Uh, I have a keypad here, which is kind of used for all the different controls, such as capturing frames, deleting frames, playback, turning on onion skinning, all that kind of stuff. Dragon Frame has a lot of functions that make it the industry standard software for stop motion animation, from low budget indie films right up to the Hollywood blockbusters. And the principle of this technique that we're using hasn't really changed much since the birth of motion picture in the early 1900s. It's literally just a case of uh, taking a photograph, moving the subject that requires motion, in this case Bob, taking another photograph and just repeating this process over and over until we have enough frames that when they're put all together they, they give the illusion that they're moving on their own. Uh, something pretty interesting about this film is it's the first time we've had camera moves in our stop motion animation. 
So we're using this nifty piece of kit. It's a camera slider made by a Spanish company called Noxon. And we're using it for this specific shot. So what it does is it allows us to pre-program camera movement and then the camera would move each time we, we take a frame of animation. Uh, the camera is mounted onto a travel rail um, and then we, we also have a panning module and a tilting module to give us lots of control for the, the direction that we want the, the camera to move in. And through the wonders of technology I'll jump into full screen here with the software to show you how we can pre-program the camera uh, using a graph editor. Uh, and this, this gives us the option to add keyframes and retime them and adjust curves and just like in any animation software with uh, 3D space. So um, yeah, I mean I think that's kind of everything that I wanted to talk about so far. So uh, thanks for watching and hopefully um, in December we'll be able to post up the, uh, the actual film uh, and I hope you all enjoyed. So thanks for your time. See ya.